Welcome to another Team Talk episode. This time we are not in our offices, but went all the way down to the basement where we keep our precision engineer Manfred captive. We received some feedback that our couch chats so far have been somewhat entertaining, but people long for more inside information and less choking. We need to take everything more seriously now. So Sebastian, I'm afraid you have to edit out all the jokes. All of them. There's no denying that the shipping date of the beta is severely delayed already, but instead of whining about it, we want to let you in on what changed and what we went through in the last months. Earlier this year, we presented the first complete hardware prototype of the Axiom Beta. A few months have passed since then and we didn't announce any major progress updates, so understandably, people are wondering what has happened in the meantime. In the beginning, the Axiom Beta stack up was meant to be just a single board on top of the microset. But we wanted to make the beta more modular, more flexible and powerful than originally planned. And more about this later in this Team Talk episode. So we decided on a more complex stack of boards. The sensor board for the early betas utilizes a zero insertion force socket or short SIF socket to hold the image sensor. It's actually an off-the-shelf server CPU socket that we are reusing here. But in a later version of the beta we will be using a dedicated custom socket. But especially now for development where you might want to take out the sensor or replace it, the SIF socket is a much more convenient way of doing it. The interface board is meant to act as a bridge between the image sensor and the actual image processing on the microset. The idea is that the interface board converts the communication to a kind of standard protocol so that any future image sensor can be used in a module without requiring any changes to the rest of the hardware. Currently we use a so-called dummy interface board because there's no FPGA on the interface board yet to handle this standard protocol communication. So for simplification at the moment we just uh, forward 32 LVDS lines of the 64 LVDS lines from the image sensor to the microset, which means that we can only run the sensor at half the performance, but this is still more than enough for the current capabilities of the beta if you consider that the image sensor could do a maximum of 300 frames per second in full 4K resolution. The beta main board is like a PC's motherboard, the central data routing PCB. It hosts the two external low speed shield connectors and the two high speed module slot connectors. The new thing now in this latest revision are the two routing FPGAs on each side of the board. These act as a kind of central cross point switch which uh, define which data lines should be going to which interfaces or processing units inside the hardware. And this can be dynamically reconfigured in software. So this opens up a lot of new possibilities. In the center of the beta mainboard, we have a solder on area, which is not populated yet. In the future, it will host chips that sense the camera's orientation and acceleration. These are the same chips that are used to stabilize quadrocopters or track head movements in virtual reality headsets. But in our case, these sensors are placed exactly behind the image sensor center. So they are in a perfect place to supply data, for example, for image stabilization or metadata about the camera movement and orientation during a shot. The last board in the stack before the microset is the power board, which generates all the different supply voltages for the chips and logic on the other PCBs in our camera. But it also monitors current and power consumption, so you can estimate remaining battery capacity based on the current camera power consumption. In this current revision of the board, we generate a predefined set of supply voltages matching the current application with the rest of the camera. In a future version, we want to adapt the power supply hardware so the voltages can be adjusted in software to make the power supply even more versatile and future-proof. 
In advance, you never know which of the potentially thousands of small things could go wrong. So if someone asks us now, what would you do differently if you had the chance to learn from your mistakes? The answer would be nothing. Of course, we learned a lot and I hope we managed to get wiser throughout the last months. But in general, we know that trying to control every tiny aspect will likely generate more problems than it prevents. When we were notified that we got the EU Horizon 2020 grant for development of the Axiom Gamma, we knew that we were actually luckier than we ever thought we would be. Running the Axiom Beta crowdfunding campaign with such a success and then receiving such a significant grant created opportunities for us we didn't dare to believe were possible to achieve before. But these wonderful opportunities also posed quite a challenge. The Axiom Beta was meant to be a predecessor for the Axiom Gamma and we wanted to collect ideas and feedback and experience from a larger beta community to then incorporate them into the Axiom Gamma design. Developing both projects at the same time implied that our original idea could only be realized to a smaller extent than planned given that you simply cannot develop a predecessor and a successor at the same time. So the only way for us to address this issue was to realign the Axiom Beta project a little bit. We realize now that we did not communicate this process and decision properly, even though the general results of these changes, for example, the added modularity to the beta, were quite visible, I think. So we wanted to explain this in full detail now. The big problem of modern digital cinematography and filmmaking is the camera as a black box. The secret path that data takes from the sensor to the storage medium, not being able to control the flow at all, even when you want to is a huge barrier. The Axiom Beta and Gamma are two different design approaches that both aim to break this barrier. The Axiom Beta was planned as a developer and early adopter kit. Basically the idea was to reduce the camera to the bare essentials which are required to shoot high quality moving images with film-like cinematic quality. Ultimately the idea was that all crowdfunding backers would shape the future of the Axiom Gamma and eventually upgrade their betas into gammas. So essentially the hardware design of the Axiom Beta was kept rather simple, mainly addressing problems we discovered with the Axiom Alpha prototype, but not adding that many new features and flexibility. With the Axiom Gamma in development, at the same time we decided to adjust the development plan of the Axiom Beta. The Axiom Beta should become an independent small lightweight but also very modular and flexible camera platform. The Axiom Beta will be available in its initial form in the next months. The Axiom Gamma will be available at the end of 2016 at the earliest. Axiom Gamma will have higher built-in performance and bandwidth reserves than what is possible in the smaller and cheaper Axiom Beta. But we still try to get as much out of the Beta as possible. The estimated retail price range for the beta is 5,000 to 6,000 euros. The target for the gamma is a bit less than twice that amount. But if we figure out we can reach these prices without compromising quality during development, we will have to increase the gamma price estimate. The scope of the gamma is not to build a cheap camera, but to build a very powerful and adaptable one. The beta has space for two low speed shields, as we call them, and two high speed modules. The Axiom Gamma has space for an arbitrary number of low speed modules, optical modules, and two high speed module slots. The Axiom Beta has a clear initial target audience and application that focuses on early adopters and developers, people who want to actively participate and contribute to the development. As the Axiom Beta matures and the hardware gets more and more final, the target audience will expand towards professional application and end users. The target application is typically for any small form factor, high performance camera like aerial recordings, drones, gimbals, cranes, chips, cable cameras or as action helmet point of view car mounted camera where cinematic quality beyond cheap H.264 compressed action cameras is desired. With the small form factor, it's of course well suited for any application typically addressed with DSLRs, for example for building small handheld rigs, uh, camera rigs or career filmmaking. And uh, the Axiom Beta and Gamma will share the same image sensor and image processing architecture, so the resulting image quality will be exactly the same. Different image sensor options will follow, of course, as new sensors become available. 
Both Xtreme Beta and Xtreme Gamma are platforms and any sensor option will be a module that can easily be swapped. Our current plan is that the image sensor hardware from the Beta can be used in the Gamma. The Xtreme Gamma will have a more sophisticated image sensor module though and will add features like uh, back focus, tilt and shift compensation of the sensor plane on all axes. External accessories like batteries, lenses, viewfinder, monitor, etc. will of course work with both the Axiom Beta and the Gamma. We made the mistake of calling it Upgrade Path from Beta to Gamma, which establishes a wrong impression. It's not an upgrade in the sense of from old to new, and the Axiom Gamma is simply not the successor of the Axiom Beta anymore. So from now on we will refer to this process as conversion. This does not alter the possibilities we offer to backers in terms of getting either beta or gamma, but we want to be more precise with how we present this process. As the time to order parts and components for building the Xtreme Beta is now nearing, we renegotiated prices with all major component providers. And as we reach higher volumes than originally anticipated in crowdfunding, they offered us better volume deals. So the Xtreme Beta actually got cheaper for each backer because so many people joined the crowdfunding and wanted to get one. But this also means we have to guarantee to reach this volume, otherwise the per unit prices will be higher than originally anticipated again. So we came up with a phased payment concept that asks every crowdfunding backer to transfer only the funds that are immediately required for purchasing parts or starting production of every backer's camera unit. In phase one, we ask for 1000 euros and we will bulk order the image sensors, sensor sockets and the microsets. We also ask those who want to wait for the XM camera to participate in phase 1 payments as they will need the same image sensor for their camera unit. In phase 2 we ask for an additional 700 euros when you decide to get your XM beta, which will cover the production of electronic boards, components and the assembly at the volume production facility. In phase 3 we will balance out all final component prices and everything left for your camera and add shipping cost. And this payment will only be due once we'll be ready to ship your camera unit. In a recent survey, we asked all backers what we should do in case we do not receive 500 phase one payments. And the great majority suggested to invite additional backers to the community to fill these open slots. So there might be a chance for a few more people to acquire a voucher and get an Axiom Beta at cost soon. We will announce this properly, but in case you want to be notified to ensure that you don't miss out on this opportunity, you can email us and we will put you on top of the waiting list straight away. We saw from the survey feedback that a lot of crowdfunding backers would also be interested in bulk purchases of third-party products. Understanding your motives, we have to warn you though that we are not an established gear reseller and we still have to investigate how such bulk orders could be handled by our small team which is currently focusing on research and development entirely. We want to make sure any device we recommend or offer for such a collective order is 100% compatible with the beta first. So we agree that it would make sense to offer packages of beta together with approved accessories but we will take us still a bit more time to evaluate these options properly. 